from afar With fire in his eyes He's standing by your door He's waiting for you is a town located in the western region of Ghana and blessed with a lot of natural serene environments that has been destroyed by illegal gold miners. On the 7th of April 2014, cries to the rural world made another earth-shattering journey to Asankwegwa. All trucks, buses, carrying items for distribution and team members the medical team and pastoral team arrived safely by the grace of God. The advance team, led by Reverend Elisha Maglu, the crusade director, worked assiduously, making sure the grounds were prepared for the campaign to begin smoothly. The next morning, the 8th of April 2014, the entire team were dispersed to help with the setting up of the platform sound equipment, generators, lighting systems, and the arrangement of chairs on the grounds. At about 2 p.m., the General Overseer, Reverend Steve Mensah and his pastoral entourage arrived on the grounds to be with the team and to know how far work had gone on the grounds. Meanwhile, Reverend Stanley Mensah, the Deputy General Overseer, had earlier been on the ground supervising and urging the team to finish the setup on time. For you. I see him standing by the door with fire in his eyes and healing in his wings to heal someone. Around 4 p.m., the grounds were set and the team dispersed to get ready for the first night. took off around 7.40 in the evening with an opening prayer by Pastor Divine Daniels. 
pastor in charge of the outreach, then followed with praises by pastors Thomas Kwame and Paul Essel and Mauli Jidula, a member of the praise team. Pastoral entourage was then welcomed on stage. Bishop Prince Tete came up with a short exhortation and introduced the speaker for the night, Reverend Steve Mensah. It was a night of power, preaching of the word, miracles and deliverances. Reverend Steve Mensah preached from 2 Samuel 4, 4, talking about Mephibosheth. The Bible said, Bible can send you off. And David said, listen very carefully. Mumia and tiye. David said, and David can say, is there yet anyone left of the house of Saul Saul that I may show him kindness na Jonathan ti. for Jonathan's sake? Me nya no is there anybody left? Obi wo ho bio wa. Because the news was that and I'm say, I'm say, everybody Obi a, in the line of Saul, ah, oh yes, Saul has been you know. killed. But David, so David came e to Jerusalem, e Jerusalem and started shouting and was is there anybody left? Also, Obi wo ho no waka. In the house of Saul. I was Saul Is here. there anybody left? In the house of Saul. I was Saul here now. Somebody lift your hands and say, I am the one, I am the one. I am but the one, the one, I'm I'm the one. one. And this man, and I saw God Ziba. Your friend is Zeba. Came and said, There is one more person oh, left in the house of Saul. Saul. He's called Mephibosheth. Your friend Mephibosheth. By his cripple. He's been crippled for many years. David said, Bring him to me. Go and call him. I see the Lord calling you tonight. So they brought into your day. Mephibosheth. From Lodeba. Every Lodeba. A place that is forgotten. It doesn't matter where you live. God still has his eyes on you. There is a reason why you are still alive. And God is about to use you for his glory. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. God is about to do something in your life. Tell the person sitting beside you. Tell him, look at me well. Look at me well. Look at me well. In the next one year, you will not recognize me. Tell the person, be my friend now. Be my friend. Be my friend now. Be my friend now. Because tomorrow by this time, and I'm so you will book an appointment to come and see me. This you will book, book an appointment with my secretary. This is what you do, my secretary. In China, San West, you have a home. Catch it, no. Tell the person, be my friend now. Catch it, say from Madam Fosse. Because here. tomorrow by this time, and I'm so what you do, say I will be driving my car. Now me, that me car, you'll be waving at me. Now for you, I see you driving your own car. I see you building your own house. I see you having your own business. I see you going to London. I see you going to America. I see you going to Germany. I see people coming to look for you. I see you having your own business. and shout unto the Lord. And after the preaching, made an altar call where most of the people came forward to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. He then prayed for them, conducted deliverance, and then after some were liberated from the shackles of Satan and his cohorts. Look. 
And some people also testified about the healings they had received in their bodies. So it is, she feels some pain. She feels some pain, pain within the heart. The whilst prayer was going on, it's vanished. It's vanished. The pain is gone. And I've been concerned the healing in Jesus' name. Give it up, buddy. My hand. What's wrong with the hand? I didn't have not a house hand. Um, we came out, sir. Hey. You couldn't make it. You couldn't make the hand. Uh-huh. 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 So she didn't even wear any dress because of the song. I see the part of the body. I see it's there like a stroke. Uh huh. Whilst the prayer was going on, Uh-huh. 
began with an opening prayer, praises and worship. This section is mainly organized for leaders, church workers and all who feel called to serve in the vineyard of the Lord. Reverend Wale Olulana of the Harmony Christian Center, UK, taught the people on a message titled, Personal Adjustment. The apostles of the Lord, they brought the cross in their heart in the way they lived and died. 
They bought the cross with the lifestyle that they lived. They bought the cross with the sacrifices that they paid. The adjustment they made in their life. There is no point in your physical cross if your life does not show the, the mark of Christ. And Jesus Christ is saying, if you want to come back to me, you must be ready to make the adjustment. Listen, we are very comfortable in a seven-star hotel. We know what it means to drive Lamborghini. I do listen to this. But we are comfortable to ride a horse if we must bring the gospel. We can climb, we can ride a bicycle if we must bring the gospel. We can go up mountain top if we must bring the gospel. When you learn to abound and to abase, it is called making adjustment. Somebody this morning, God's going to impact you with the grace to make the necessary adjustment. If you will go far in anything in your life, you make adjustment. A good marriage requires a daily adjustment. A good walk with God requires a daily adjustment. When we come out on the trip like this and you see a good ministry, like the Christ Reward, you see great things God is doing through Reverend Steve and Esteem. It's because they are making adjustments. They have decided to leave the comfort of their house and to come out on the street and to drive for, for hours on the bad road to come and make adjustments so that somebody's life can be adjusted to God. This morning, good news has come to you. After he was done, Reverend Steve Mensah came up with understanding the call of God, after which he prayed and brought the seminar to a close. What people are saying is this one there is nothing to the net. God will pick it up. What men have thrown away? But God will pick it up. From here, I said from here. were on the ground setting up the place for the distribution. At about 12 in the afternoon, the distribution began when Reverend Steve Mensah and team returned from the seminar. The distribution was declared open and people started coming through to pick up from the stands items of their choice. This session saw some low patronage from the beginning. Like the doubting Thomases, they doubted whether a church could do all that they had advertised. When a few people came and received their items, then the people started coming in into the grounds. With fire in his eyes and healing in his wings to heal someone.
we have here Pastor Coretta from Arizona Dominion Life Ministries, Mission for Hope and Grace. And we want to hear her and what she has seen so far and her thoughts on it. Pastor, you're welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a blessing to be here with you too. What has your thoughts been so far on the crusade? Well, this is not my first crusade, and um, I've seen great improvements. Over the years, we have learned how to organize better and everything, and we're doing a lot more. We have medical teams, te stuff that we did not have before, we could not provide, we're providing them now. And it's really a blessing to be able to minister to these people who are in need, not only physically giving them clothes and food, economic, but their spiritual needs as well. So, um, so far, this is a really a blessing to um, each community that we go to. We were here for the crusade last night. Yes, I was. What are your thoughts on the crusade? How was it and how was it feeling um, from the previous time to now? How was it for you? It was very powerful. It was very powerful. More people are responding to what we're doing and a lot more souls are being saved. I mean, healings took place, deliverances took place, and God has a word for everyone everywhere that we go. And it was really a blessing. I want to thank the people of Arizona and wherever they contributed from to my ministry, Mission of Hope and Grace, um, in Scottsdale, Arizona, because this is what you gave me. I'm not like the other um, donation centers that resell these things. When you give it to me freely, I come and I give it freely. And that's what this is about, meeting the needs of the people. Like Christ said, when you give to the poor, he will repay you. And um, I know that this is a picture taken from heaven, and he's going to repay each and every one of our contributors. God bless you. God bless you too, Pastor. I'm the pastor of Elim Church International, based in Stevenage in the UK. Uh, we got to know of what CEM is doing in the rural world, bringing the gospel and also sharing clothes and food stuff and so on. And we, as part of our mission, we, we came with a team of 12, uh, 10 of them are nurses, specialists uh, in various uh, nursing areas. Um, we had support from the church in terms of people donating clothes, money, uh, food stuff, uh, medical supplies, medicine, uh, and so we came with some of these things, uh, and some of them are on the way coming, and we like to really appreciate all our members who uh, stood with us to come and do this, because this is at the heart of Christ. Jesus said, when I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was hungry, you fed me. And so we are truly very grateful to our church members who stood with us. Uh, and we are also grateful to our uh, medical team who came with us to come and support the CEM in that San Croix Christ for the Rural Crusade. Right. What do you have to tell other ministries that would be considering supporting Christ to the rural world? Um, I think that you don't have to reinvent the wheels. If there is a church that is already doing this, uh, you can just rally behind them and support them. And it's, you can see from behind the evidence that the clothes that we donated are actually being said to uh, the residents in this area. And that's what we want to see. We believe that a charismatic evangelistic ministry under the leadership of Reverend Steve. It's a genuine ministry. It's a ministry that we believe God is using to bless the world in this dispensation. And we feel very proud to be able to support what God is doing here. And I will really encourage uh, various churches to rally behind ministries like this. Not just this, but there are other churches around who are also into similar missions. You don't have to do the same thing. If there's another church doing it, this is work for God. We work as the body of Christ. So if there's an area that you can support another church in terms of, you know, providing, you know, finance, medical aid, you know, clothing, training or whatever, we are, we are, we, we count it a privilege. And we'd like to encourage every church that is in a position to do this, uh, not to hesitate at all. We, we recommend CEM. Thank you so much, Rasta. <laughs>
This time, the distribution continued until about 4.30 p.m. when the session was closed. Second night. One thing I've seen is that at any, every crusade, there is a change. Something new happens. God does something new. You know, I mean, miracles and things, they keep on increasing. We see a lot of things happening. And I believe that as we continue to do this work for the Lord, we shall see greater things. And I'm expecting great things to happen tonight. I'm believing God that people will come here and be delivered. They will not go back with the burdens that they have carried. And I know that the God who sent us here, he will fulfill the reason why he brought us here. The evening crusade started with the opening prayer at about 7.15 and the praise team took over and continued from then until 8.30 p.m. It's an awesome time here. The power of God is falling all over the whole place. You can feel the electricity. It's awesome. Lives have been delivered. Souls of men that have been chased, have been bondage. God is, God is saving people. I wish you were here. You can feel it through your television. The power of God is so awesome. I want to encourage all our partners, everyone who is giving through this great ministry, Christ of the Rural World. God bless you. You know, over the last few days, we have seen the power of God moving. In this village, you can see the atmosphere behind me. The people are set free. The Bible said, we said there was great joy in that city. When the power of God came down, the people were saved. There was so much release. People were delivered from evil, evil and tormented spirit. You can see young people who are screaming, who are crying out. The other day, a woman who had been in with a pain in a menstrual problem for many years, God set her free. Somebody who had epilepsy from childhood, God set her free. I mean, what price can we pay for that? There was a woman who has been to all hospitals and yet God saved her one night. I want to thank you all our donors, all our partners. May the Lord bless you. Listen, this is the time to increase your giving. This is the time to step up everything you are doing because the best is yet to come. The crowd is awesome. The people are, they are rejoicing. It's not only in the goods you are giving, but the word of God is bring with power. Reverend Steve and the team, I mean, God is just blowing our mind. You can see how we are all so happy. This is only possible because of what you are doing, because of your giving. Thank you very much for what you are doing. Continue to do this and continue to pray for us that we will continue to take this gospel to the ends of the world. God bless you. Reverend Steve Mensah and the other men of God came in a convoy to the grounds. The place was charged with psalms and praise unto the Lord. It is unbelievable the masses that troop to the ground. The people came out in their numbers and in their thousands. <laughs> Reverend Steve Mensah was then invited to the microphone. He charged the people to pray opened the scriptures, giving them reasons why they had to pray. My friend is about to preach. And I'm saying, preaching is about to fall on our prayers. 
led the people through 20 minutes of prayer. He exalted them to pray for themselves and the town. For a miracle in my life, in my children, and in my work, and in my jumemu, as I pray, Look from heaven. Shall we free us from and answer? As I pray, as I pray, and now me bombay and clap my hands. Shall we pray? Receive my miracle. Everybody, I want what you have. Open your mouth. You have your hands. Thereafter, he invited the speaker for the night, Reverend Wale Ululana, who preached under the dynamic power of God. All the time you have been praying, you thought God could not hear you. You have thought that God had forgotten you. But God said, no, I have reserved this day special for you. Say I am the next candidate for a miracle. Every spirit, every spirit that has held you down these past years, we command right now. Be loose, be loose, be loose, be loose. As I am speaking, as I am speaking. I command you, every demon, every spirit, every principality, every oppression, every evil spirit that has chained you down, I break your hold in the name of Jesus. I break your hold in the name of Jesus. I command your miracle. This minute, this minute, I command your miracle. Reverend Wale Ululana made an altar call and prayed for those who had come forward to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. It was, however, a night of miracles, and after some intensive prayers for the sick, many people went upstage to testify. So many doctors said they were going to go back. Today, why was they praying? They saw that the growth has the vanished. Vanished. It's gone. The growth had vanished. Yes. Never to come back again. Have met you. Your husband here, Ukwuwa, was 
He doesn't come. The husband is not around. Does she have a husband? But for what is Who will come? Yeah, yes, husband. And you want to have your own babies? Oh, but some will. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to Christ, to Jesus. On the integrity of the miracles you have done before tonight and tonight. And now we're saying, Chanel, why are you not doing it? We have created places where there seems to be no way. We are the flame, but we come upon this woman. We decree that her testimony will be complete. In the name of Jesus. Receive that baby. Receive that baby. In the name of Jesus. Over here, not the arcade. She was giving birth, or after she was born, water entered into the ears, and she could not hear it. Place while we're praying, the ear popped open, and she cannot that hear it. That was what I had. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this healing. It is permanent in the name of Jesus. Amen. Where we do. The second night came to a successful end. Day two, morning. On the second morning, as usual, the team gathered for a brief devotion. Then some people went for the seminar while others remained on the grounds, setting up the place for the free food distribution. At 8.30 a.m., the opening prayer was said at the seminar, followed by praises and worship. Then Reverend Steve Mensah was called to bring to the microphone the first teacher, Reverend Kojo Wood. He taught on overcoming discouragement. I want to talk to you very briefly about something that is very important for us as ministers. Overcoming the spirit of discouragement. I want you to know that the first source of discouragement comes from your house. Your house. Your house. Satan can use your house people against you. Satan can use your wife against you. Satan can use your husband against you. Satan can use your child against you on Sunday morning when you are ready to preach. On the basis of what David said, <laughs> King Saul looked at him and gave him his armor. David wore it. David said, No, I don't fit in this. <laughs> David said, I don't want to live on a borrowed road. <laughs> Reverend Steve Mensah continued and taught the people from John 14, 12. The anointing for greater works and we saw the way in the market, you know, will not come to you if you don't decide. Mm. So, okay. God does not force his oil for you who don't have the deserve it. You must be hungry for it. You must look for it. You must decide. You must, you must tell us, I want this anointing. An anointing is not your Bible school certificate. Your clerical is not the anointing. Your 
Where you live is not the anointing. Baby, I won't tell you any more Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. Your passport is not the anointing. Your passport is the problem. The, 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 the money you have is not the anointing. The anointing is the supernatural power of God. Jesus didn't call you to lecture. He called you to preach the gospel. There are demon possessed people in your church. And you are lecturing. After the teaching of the word, Reverend Steve Mensah conducted an anointing and impartation where all church leaders and people who felt called received fresh anointing and fresh moves in the area of their ministries. Some leaders were also blessed with Christian literature from the men of God which were donated by Bishop Dag Hewitt Mills of the Lighthouse Chapel International. Then the seminar was brought to an end. Food Distribution At about 12.30 in the afternoon, Reverend Steve Mensah and the pastoral entourage arrived at the Free Food Distribution Center. The center was declared open and the people started coming through. Unlike the first day, people had gathered ready to receive the food packages comprising a bar of key soup, rice, gari, sugar, beans, lanterns, cutlasses, and rubber buckets. Plastic bowls, cups, and bathroom sandals or slippers were given to the children as a gift from the Christ to the Rural World team to demonstrate to them the love of God. You can't believe the thousands that came through the free food session.
Reverend. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How has today been for you? Wow. You know, there is no, none of this mission, none of this crusade that is the same. Today has been fantastic. This trip has been life changing. You know, it's, it's full of dramas and new things to learn. And I'm seeing the work progressing and increasing. There are so many aspects of it. I just don't know where to start from. How is this outreach different from the other previous ones that you have attended? Okay, to start with, the people we are ministering to this time around, um, even though they are not really the northerners, uh, you could still see that need is the same everywhere you go to. And even though most of the people down here in the eastern region, they are not as destitute, they are not as really desperate, but you could see the condition that they are in. The fact that both old and frail, strong and frail, are still struggling to get the things we brought to them. Maybe it is just man's desire to always want more. But many of them, we see what they are wearing. And they are really, they are, the, 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 the expression on their face when they get one blouse, one top, or even when it comes to food. One woman down there today who was distributing cutlasses, and then she had um, a, 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 a bucket of food. She said, you know what, this cutlass is enough for me. 
even if I don't get the food. That's to tell us what God is doing through Christ of Reward. God is using this ministry to actually answer people's need at the point of their need. No matter what they are coming from, whether their religion is, God is meeting their need on these grounds. And I want to challenge ministries that are out there. Listen, every ministry understands the area of their calling. But there is no ministry that is not called to mission. Because that's what God called us to do. Christ died. The whole world is his mission field. So I challenge you, man of God, woman of God, this is a, this is a good time to actually embark on the mission work that God has called all of us to do, especially in Christ's real world. We are under a captain that is a man of integrity, a man who compa whose compassion I, I don't understand. You know, it's not just to give things and throw things, but he cares about the people in the sun, people who are in queue, they have been queuing for all day. And you see how he talks about these people. It's almost like, you know what? I, I just don't know how to describe it. But there, there are so many things you can learn when you work under this kind of leadership. And I'm learning every day. So I encourage you to be part of this. God bless you. God bless you too. Reverend, you are welcome. Thank you very much. I love the smiles on your face. What, how has today been for you? Well, it's been very fantastic. And uh, we always try to improve on our services to reduce the timeline and the hours that the people spend uh, under the sun. And I think that the strategy we adopted this time is work very well. We divided the food distribution into three segments, uh, pregnant women and nursing mothers, elderly men, and then regular old people. It has worked beautifully. We normally spend about six hours distributing. But as of now, it's almost close to three. We're almost done, which means we have cut down our distribution time by three hours. This is a great thing. And, and so far, we have met our target groups. There are still more people out there. And I think that we are very grateful to God. I want us to speak to those who are still contributing to Christ the Railroad from your own heart to these people. Tell them what has happened and how they can still continue to contribute to the work of God that is being done by Christ the Railroad. I think that I won't say much because when I stood here listening to Pastor Wally and the passionate appeal he made, I think he speaks, he says it all. If you come here yourself, you're on the grounds, and you see the faces of the people, and the needs, and the food items, and the way they are caring for it, I think it is enough for you to contribute more. Good afternoon, Reverend. Good afternoon. Wow. It's hot this afternoon, and we're already distributing. What have you seen so far, and what can you tell us? Oh, the stampede in order to enter into the yard to collect food items. Look at the, the people have come in their numbers and they are trying to enter the, to the year. We are trying to give them the coupons that we have so we can so they can have access to collect their food items. They are not even allowing us to give them the coupons. They are beating us down. So they're having problems in distribution. The people have come in their numbers. It's been awesome. Wow, wow. We, we, we believe that Christ the Real World has, has, still has more to do in regards to this kind mission. I want us to know how different Asan Kregua Crusade has been from the others that we are in, in, in terms of the distribution process. As St. Kregua Crusade is still having a very tough assignment because the first crusade was cancelled. We promised them so many things and they didn't come on. Now we came again. Uh, pasting all our posters around and announcing that we are coming again with all the various things that we used to do. And they didn't believe it. So the first day when we came, the number was, uh, was quite sizable. But the people kept saying in town that, oh, it's not true, it's not true. So, so when we started distributing the clothes for the first night, it was heartbreaking. Then the second, the second day, it's overwhelming. Now they believe us. We are distributing everywhere and blessing them as well. Yesterday's attendance at the Crusade Ground was super overwhelming. We had 13 metro buses coming from all over the towns and villages and they came in their numbers. The whole park were filled with people participating in the gospel. Right. Thank you so much. How has today been for you? I love it. Today has been fantastic. It's just amazing to see all these people out here that the church is helping. You know, I cannot believe it. We've been there now for about three days. 
and uh, a team of us, about 11 of us, came from London. And I tell you, the Lord is our strength. We appreciate the community accepting us. We appreciate the time that they've given us. And God's willing, we will do more in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we see all these nursing mothers here with babies and with limited resources, you know. And we, want, we just want to do more. We want to do more just to serve the people because by serving the people we are serving our god and by doing that but you know these little things that we think are meaningless they mean a lot to the community they mean a lot to the cripple they mean a lot to the elderly who's got nobody to look after them some of them have worked for two days i met a the old man said he walked for two days to get here. He doesn't know how he's going to get back home. And I said to him that, which area do you live? He said he lives in one area. So I had to transfer him to one of the other people, you know, because the church has provided buses to get people here. And I tell you, it's been fantastic. And all glory be to God Almighty. God Amen. bless you. You Amen. came all the way from London. I believe there were so many people who have supported this. Yeah. Every dollar, every pound, yeah. every every contribution yeah. is really worth it. What do you have to tell those who have contributed to such a work and those who are here to contribute? I tell you, those who have contributed, they are reaping the benefits even right from this minute. They don't have to wait until they get back to London to reap the benefits. And those who have not been able to, we are praying that in all ways, in all aspects of their life, God will touch them, both emotionally, physically, spiritually, to come and do this work. So that when we are coming in future, there will be more of us coming in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Lord. <laughs> Good afternoon, Reverend. Good afternoon. How has today been for you as um, the third day of our crusade here in Asan Kregua? Very exciting, very challenging, very rewarding also. Yes. Uh, we, you can see that people are really hungry. Yesterday was quite relaxed because I'm sure some thought that what we were talking about was just uh, hearsay. But when they came and realized that it was true, they went home and they brought their parents, they brought their friends. So today you can see that the crowd is more than yesterday. And we are hoping that tomorrow will be more. But tomorrow will be the medicals and the other things that came along with it. You know. So right now, we are here distributing uh, buckets, uh, soap, and food items for all the nursing mothers and the, the needy ones. And so that's what we are doing today. Uh -huh. A worthy cause. Anybody that gave, the Bible says that he that gives the poor lends to the Lord, and that which he gave, the Lord will pay. And so everyone that has made this possible, whether in diaspora, in Ghana, outside, clothes, money, God will reward you bountifully. You will see the reward in many dimensions in your life. So remain blessed. And next time, contribute more and see the hand of God in your life more. God bless you. Thank you very much. Wow. How has today been? I can see the sun is really hitting you hard, but how has the mission trip been so far for you? It's been a very awesome and interesting experience, I must say. Um, there's no amount of hearing or reading about it or watching it on the video until you're actually on the ground before you can actually know the extent, the extent of the work that goes on here. It's been an amazing experience so far. What exactly have you been doing today? Seeing that the distribution is vast, we are distributing so many things. What have you been really doing today? Um, mostly I've been uh, stationed with the um, distribution of the lanterns and as well as distribution of the plastic buckets and plastic um, um, jugs as well. It's interesting to know that the lanterns went just so fast and there were so many of them, I mean well over 1,200 or thereabouts, but they all vanished within, I said within 20 minutes. And then the next thing we had to look for alternatives and you could see the look on people's faces. And when there's so much, so much joy and so much appreciation of what we're giving to them. Um, I've, I've obviously, you know, uh, some of them would say to me, oh, um, you know, saying thank you to me um, in Medrasi, in the um, Ghanaian language. And then some of them would be saying to me, God bless you, which means, what does it actually say? This, they were saying it as, um, Yami Yamin Shao, or Yami Shao, I mean, God bless all of you. And I, and I think really, that really spoke volumes in terms of how people really appreciated what they were given. I would say, even if you're not here, 
and your money and your contribution has been here and you've done it religiously, please don't stop because you are definitely contributing joy and hope to someone's face. You need to see someone who looks so downcast and so low and yet you give them that you know, parcel, that gift and how their faces beam up and lighten up with joy because you're contributing joy and hope even to someone's life, it's well worth it. So please don't give up, keep going on and the Lord will bless you richly. were blessed by the Christ to the Rural World team and some beneficiaries spoke to the camera crew about the blessing they had received, thanking God for sending the team to their town. As you can see, they are full of gratitude for the donations, and this is indeed beautiful. You can see them carrying their stuff already. They are full of gratitude and I believe it's, 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 it's really awesome and beautiful to see these beautiful ladies and old women grateful for these kind guests. The distribution continued until about 5 p.m. when it ended. The third and final night. The third night was massively packed with thousands of people. The place was charged with praises and dancing unto the Lord. I'm sure heavens rejoiced to have recorded such a number of people guarded in one place, giving thanks to God. During the praises at about 8.15 p.m., Reverend Steve Mensah and the pastoral team arrived at the crusade grounds, took their seat on the stage. Thereafter, Reverend Kojo Wood from the LM Pentecostal Ministry UK was introduced to the microphone. 
he preached about the Lord bringing deliverance to the children of Israel through Moses. Exodus chapter 8. Exodus 8. And verse 1. God told Moses. Go, Moses. Go, Moses. Go to Egypt. Go Egypt. Go and tell Pharaoh. Catch the Pharaoh, sir. To let my people go. Oh, my, my uncle. That they will serve me. This evening, the purpose for your deliverance the is to release you from captivity to come and serve the Lord. Let every yoke in this place be broken. Let every satanic hindrance be removed. Let every restriction on God's people collapse. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Moses came to the Red Sea with the Israelites. My God, what is going to happen? Look, behind him, the Egyptians were coming. Before him, the Red Sea was there. He cannot return. And he cannot go forward. I say he cannot return. And he cannot go forward. So Moses lifted up his eyes. Lord, in Exodus chapter 8, verse 1, you told me to go and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And now the Red Sea is there. What am I going to do? God said, Moses, what is in your hand? He said, it's the wrong. God said, strike the sea. Moses, strike the sea. The sea parted. I see the sea parted. Somebody, somebody sees going to pass. Somebody sees going to pass. God has sent Moses to us. He has sent Moses to us. We are about to be delivered. No Satan shall escape tonight. In the name of Jesus. And after that, powerful message, Reverend Steve Mensah, the President of Christ to the Rural World, continued with another message. You need to be there to experience the word preached with conviction and power. Luke 19 verse 28 and when he has thou spoken he went before ascending up to Jerusalem and it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives he sent two of his disciples saying go ye into the village over against you in the which at your entering ye shall find a donkey tied where all yet never man sat loose him loose him and bring him here there are people that the enemy has tied to a tree tied to a tree so that the devil will use you to do a donkey job but tonight Jesus has sent us here to lose you to lose you and bring you to him tonight the Bible says he who the son shall set free he who the son shall set free he shall be free indeed tonight is your freedom tonight we declare your freedom freedom from sickness freedom from diseases freedom from curses freedom from pain freedom from stealing say amen 
Amen. You will be free tonight to do the will of the master. I see you becoming somebody great. I see you becoming a great lawyer. I see you becoming a great doctor. I see you becoming an engineer. I see you becoming oh I see you becoming a businesswoman. I see you becoming somebody important. If there is anybody here that the enemy has tied you to a tree to use you to do a donkey job then tonight we lose you from that tree there are some owners who don't want you to be free but tonight we command them to take off their dirty hands from God's property after the delivery of the word, Reverend Steve Mensah and the team of pastors conducted deliverance for the people and demons fled from their bodies with loud cries. The power of God was at work all over the place of a truth. No power can be compared to the Lord. It was indeed a massive deliverance. Nursing mothers and babies were also prayed for, and then the last night of the campaign was brought to a close. From afar. Medical care. The 11th of April 2014 was set aside by the president and leadership of Christ to rural world to attend to the people medically after meeting the spiritual needs of the people, which is exhibited by Christ to the rural world on all their campaigns so far. Early in the morning, about 5 a.m., people started gathering on the ground, coming from the town and its surrounding villages. You will never know how many people need medical care until you organize a free one. It was pathetic to see the aged, the lame, the blind, bedridden and sick people go through the session. These were the units under the clinic. General waiting area, registration, checking of blood pressure and sugar levels, consultation, wound dressing, prayer and counseling, deworming of children and pharmacy.
Good afternoon, Reverend. Good afternoon. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm fine. I just want to know, how has our St. Gregoire for Christ crusade been for us? Well, it's amazing. Each time I thought it was the best, but it looks like it's still getting better and better. It's so well organized. It's not as stressful as when we began. This time, the crowds are there, but we thank God for our partners. We thank God for our team members, they are so organized, we are able to serve almost everybody now, and even within the shortest possible time. I think to me, I'm really impressed with this one. I wanted to talk about the night crusades. Okay. Normally, I've spoken to many pastors and their, their view was that normally we see deliverances and you know, the manifestations of spirits on the third day, but right from day one, yeah. it was a different atmosphere. How was it like? Well, it was amazing. This told us that there's a lot, there are a lot of people in bondage. You could see from the way the manifestations were going that some of these people are people who have been into shrines, been into a lot of practices, and when they meet with the power of God, automatically you're going to have these kind of things. And the, the most interesting and frightening aspect of it were the children. You have very little innocent children and they are, it takes about six people to hold down a nine, ten year old. You can see how demon possessed these children have been. And we thank God for us obeying the commandments of God to come out with the great commandment, to go out into the villages, to go out into the towns, to witness to these people. I can imagine that small boy growing up into an adult. That would be a very bad situation. But right from this stage, the seed has been sown. And I know that out of it is going to, are going to come pastors. Over the previous years, we've been doing this for over 25 years now. And we, we, it's so, nice to see people come out. Some come to Accra and say, I'm a pastor now. You came to my village years ago. You witnessed to me and I gave my life to Christ and they are doing wonderful things for God. It's fulfilling to see that. The team was overwhelmed by the thousands of people that came through the clinic.
The team recorded a few but serious cases that came through the clinic. A woman with multiple goiters, a young boy with wounds under the soles of his feet eating into the bones, another young boy who had undescended testicles. He has an undescended testis. Usually if it is seen earlier in life, you can push it down into the scrotum. Unfortunately, this is a little late. So where it is, it's most likely that we'll have to take it out because there's a risk of testicular cancer later in life. So which is why I'm saying that he has to go and see the, the I don't know, either the surgeons or some pediatrician. Let him have a look at it. And finally, a young girl who is about 13 years suffering from elephantiasis. All these cases mentioned were brought to Accra for further treatment. She started having these signs when she was five years old. It has left her out of school because she's been made fun of as she goes to school. The cry of mother for the child is that we come and then we help her. She has gone everywhere and I believe it is for medical attention. And so we cry out to you, our, our generous helpers, to come and partner with us to save little Joycelyn's life from this condition. She is a child of God and she deserves medical care. We want to talk to you and we know that as you've always helped us, you help us to put a smile on little Joycelyn's face to the glory of the name of the Lord. Reverend, by God's grace, we are crowning up our Akwa St. for Christ crusade today. I just want to ask about yesterday, the last night of the crusade. How did it go? Well, our last nights are always our deliverance night, where we deal with demonic, chronic spirits that have infested our people. The Bible says, preach the gospel, heal the sick, and cast out devils. So yesterday was a night of casting out of devils. And I think it went well. Yes, I had a very good time myself. Today our medical outreach is going on. And so far, Daddy, how is it going? Well, um, so far, so good. Um, we had an overwhelming crowd from the beginning. But we also have a very great number of doctors who volunteered to come on this mission and uh, they have worked for hours on ending and as i speak now the time is almost uh, it's about 4 20. this thing began about eight o'clock they haven't taken a break they haven't walked out from their seats the crowd well, there were thousands here i'm sure to show from the clip and uh, uh, we, should, we have a lot of people sitting in the pharmacy unit. We still have a lot of drugs here. We have a lot of pharmacists who are helping. So we are hoping that by 6 p.m. we we'll have cleared the rest of the people here. And uh, this time around, we have added some dentists who have come with dental equipment. We have a huge crowd at the optometry session. I'm sure you've been there. That has also gone very well. So as usual, by God's grace, we'll finish the medicals too very well. Daddy, I have seen a quite a number of special cases, and I believe for Christ the Royal War, we don't just leave them like that. We do our best to help them get further medical attention. How are we handling the special cases that have come before us today? Yeah, you are, you, you're right when you say that we have special cases. Everywhere we go, we are confronted with very special cases that uh, the people who are involved are totally helpless to it. We have a young man here who has a hole under his feet, traveling through the bone. And when I said that, if the hole is not sealed, the infection under the foot, sole of the foot of the boy, will travel and eventually the whole leg will paralyze. So we have to take him. It's a small boy, I think about 12 or 13. And then we have another case of a 14-year-old gentleman whose testicles are still hidden in the abdomen. Mm -hmm. So we have to do surgery and bring it out. Then we also have a serious case of goiter that, that had to be taken care of by surgery. Then we have the most pathetic of all, that is a 13-year-old girl. And I'm sure the screen, the, the video will show, who has a very rare case of elephantiasis. And right now, we don't even have a place where he will, she would even stay for the medical attention, which means that she has to travel from here straight to the world. 
straight to the hospital. Nobody can keep her in the house, not even the rooms where the sick people are kept before. So these are the cases. They are very challenging. But as usual, Christ the rural world is committed to finishing what she has started. So these people are going to return to San Gregoire and to the glory of God to be totally healed. We want to thank all our supporters, all those who have been helping us home and abroad for the good work they are doing. But from what we're seeing today, we still need the help as much as we can. Drugs have run out much earlier than we've ever expected. And we know that there are people out there who have access to funding, NGOs and into medical supplies who can help us. We're appealing to all of you out there. Please do your best if you can. Help us to support this great work. These are people, if we hadn't come here, I don't know what would have happened to some of them. Some of the cases are really bad. But I believe that as good seed sown, you are going to reap it bountifully. Thank you very much. So I think that uh, the number to, to call is really on your screen right now. Call these numbers. Call these numbers. Take your phone and call now. Don't say I'll call tomorrow. Call now. And then they'll pick them up. You can come for cash, for clothing, food, anything at all. Some of the things that you don't use at home are needed by these people. So we need your support in cash and in kind. Call us. We will come to your office, come to your church, come to your company organization and pick up those, whether home or abroad. Call these numbers. And, you, and the Bible says that he that giveth to the poor mm. lendeth to the Lord. Amen. And that which he has given will the Lord repay. Now, when the Lord decides to repay you, do you think he will give it back in the same coin that you gave it to him? No, he will give it to you shaking together, yes. running over, spilling over in abundance. So give no amount that is too small or too big for these poor people. So we can bring more medicine. We want to buy a dental van, want to buy an ophthalmologist van, want to buy other equipments and do surgery on site. The eye people want to do cataract surgery on site. We want to extract tooth on site. We want to do so many things on site. So your donation will help people you don't know. Don't forget, he that giveth to the poor, lendeth to the Lord. That which he has given, will the Lord repay. God bless you, and I love you. At this particular crusade, another important unit, the dental care, was introduced to the clinic setup. And for the first time, people who had problems with their teeth had them removed or attended to. He's waiting for you.
I think it's gone well. We've seen quite a number of people. Um, we have doctors who are taking care of patients. Um, we have the pharmacy that provides the medicine for the patient. We have the dental section, the eye section, which sees to the um, eye problems of people. We've dewormed children. We are doing physiotherapy checking for the sugar levels of people, their blood pressure, and checking to see if they have malaria. So far, quite everything is going on well. Quite a number of people, but we are still on it. With the cases that are coming in, normally we have very serious cases that may not be you know, handled right here on the field. How are we planning to handle some of these cases? Yes, um, as usual, we've got quite, um, I think so far we have about four confirmed cases, but the day is still young, um, of cases that we need to take back to Accra. Usually what we do is we take them to Kolebu for expect care, and it's all got to do with funding because we need one to accommodate these people, get um, specialist care for them, and for the time they are there, we need to take care of their feeding, their medications to make sure that they are cured and they have a good life to live. As a good for Christ's crusade has been very, very successful. Um, right from um, when we took off on some uh, took off on Sunday, some on Monday, we all arrived safely, uh, we were settled and we were very peaceful. We came to the grounds. Um, all activities that we had to do, preparations that we had to do on the ground, everything went on very, very well. All the resources we needed um, in terms of uh, logistics, canopies, chairs, everything was available. And the team members also did their very best. They worked very well, they were very cooperative. We were able to set up, organize ourselves. The evening programs were just something else with manifestations of the power of God manifesting right from the beginning of the, the first night. And so this crusade will say that even though we've not ended the, the medical yet, we just know that once you have covered uh, three quarters of, of the day and, uh, and of the activities and you have been successful, it means that the whole thing has been successful. That is what we know so far. In fact, this crusade has been a very successful crusade. We had so many challenges, but through it all, God has been good to us. Normally, we have deliverance on the third day, but with this one, with this crusade, we started having the deliverance from the very first day. You could see the people, I mean, yearning for the gospel. They are ready to have breakthroughs and to be delivered from the uh, hands of the evil one. And it has been awesome when God has been put to us. I want to use this opportunity to thank the people who have been supporting Christ to the Rural World Crusade and also to encourage uh, other people to join and to support this great work that God is doing in Christ to the Rural World. In fact, I believe when you save a soul, you have given life to someone. And when you sow a seed of given life, you will reap life. So I believe that people should give towards this Christ to the rural world by saving a soul, which I believe is the greatest given so far.
Fantastic. Today we had uh, quite a number of doctors standing in. It's been tremendous. We've improved over the period of time. We have about 120 doctors on the field working uh, for the law. And, and, and it's been, we have taken care of over thousands and thousands of people already. But uh, the problem now is the medication because um, we, we never estimated that it will run out so quickly. And as of now, we have over 2,000 people that have not been taken care of. And we, I don't think this medication is enough. So uh, it's been fantastic. It's been progressive, but we still need help. And we want to talk to people out there, this is for God. We're not doing anything to make any profit, to make any gain, to make any name for ourselves. We are carrying out the project called the giving out the people the total gospel of Jesus Christ. But the Bible said that Jesus said once and said that I came to you and you did not feed me. I was in prison. You did not visit me. I was naked. You did not clothe me. And they asked, Lord, when did this happen? He said, because you could not do it for your friend, you did not do it to me. So if we are carrying out the gospel of Jesus Christ, we must follow it with the compassion work. Jesus had compassion on people and, 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 and multiplied bread and fish for people. Jesus had compassion on people and healed their diseases. So we are in the same kind of business, lifting up the name of Jesus. And we want you to partner with us. We want you to support us. Anything that you can get to support us, to get more drugs for the people, we, we are appealing that you, you, you rally with the vision so we can get more drugs to support. Because looking at the number of people that are seated, uh, I, I don't know, but we pray. So please, we are appealing to you, join forces with us, form an alliance with us, partner with us, support us with whatever you have. Any little thing you can support us with, it will go a long way to help us to provide more drugs on the next mission to be able to take care of the number of persons that we need to take care of. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. so we have it there. We need more medication for our medical outreaches. We cannot just consult and diagnose without giving them the necessary medication. And so the appeal has been made. Anywhere you are in the world, we just want to make the appeal, passionate appeal, that we need the drugs, that we may continue to show the love of God to the people. From afar, with fire in his eyes, he's standing by your door. Waiting for you I see him Standing by the door With fire in his eyes And healing in his wings To heal someone who believes So open up your heart His way as we can see, we are finally wrapping up our crusade here in Asan Kregua. We have done so much by the grace of God, and today the medical team have done tremendously well. They have sat throughout the day from the beginning of this day till even now. People are still in the queues waiting to be attended to. Beloved in the Lord, it is your partnership with Christ the real world that has made this day a success. And if indeed God blesses those who give to the poor, indeed, you are also going to be blessed. We thank all our partners, we thank all our donors, we thank all the churches that have supported Christ to the real world and now. Even you who is, who is thinking of supporting us even in our next outreach. The work is big indeed. As Christ said, the field is right but the laborers are few. Do not hesitate 
to give your own quota in any way. Call the numbers and let us know how you want to support us. We will be glad to receive your donations to even spread the love of God to the people in the rural areas. Once again, we want to say a big thank you to all partners, prayer partners, donor partners, and even the churches that have supported Christ the rural world till now. We are grateful indeed, and God bless you. The medical session continued until about 5.18 p.m. The four-day campaign ended successfully by the special grace of God. It was also successful because you gave. Thank you for allowing yourself to be used by God to be a blessing.